Do you guys see these 17 inch steel pipes bolted onto the torso of a marble statue? Now, I don't know about you guys, but I haven't heard of too many other lifetime naturals on YouTube having 17 inch cannons at a mere 150 pounds. That being said, I don't really care about how big my arms are anymore, which is a far cry from when I started weightlifting. Now I'm just bodybuilding to become a fitness influencer, whereas the initial reason I started in the first place was because all I cared about was having big arms. It was something that seemed glamorous when I was a teenager, and I think I even suffered from big orexia until I was in my early 20s, which is basically muscle dysphormia. It's the belief that one's body is too small, not muscular enough, and it made sense that I felt like that because I spent so much time looking at pictures and videos of IFBB Pro bodybuilders, that unrealistic, unachievable, very enhanced muscle level. And that was throughout most of my early years lifting weights as a teenager. Even when I had people telling me my arms were huge, I still didn't really believe that in the mirror. Now I have that more objective, self-aware perspective on life, and I'm more reasonable with both my perception of my physique as well as the typical routines and training that can get you there. That can't be said for the majority of weightlifters who look forward to doing arm exercises as much as possible. When I was following a bodybuilding bro split, I was doing triceps and biceps with chest and back Monday and Tuesday, and then I even had a separate arm day on Friday. You know, people would love to do bicep curls every day if that's what they thought would get them bigger arms, and some people do, including myself. The first thing I wanna bring up is the size of the muscle relevant to the amount of volume, and I'll do a whole video on this, but think about how large your bicep is compared to your back or chest. The amount of tissue that is physically contained in that area is significantly smaller than the larger muscles, and it would make sense that you would do less volume to stimulate the bicep effectively. And that applies specifically to individual workout volume, not necessarily weekly volume. As long as you achieve the maximum volume for that muscle size in every workout, depending on the frequency, you're good to go. That doesn't mean you can just cram all of that weekly volume into one day. Your bicep needs a certain period of time to rest and recover between sessions. Now this is kind of contradictory to the first piece of advice people tend to give you. Most will say the reason your muscle isn't growing is strictly because you're not doing enough volume. And yes, that is true, but they need to specify the frequency as well. Doing two to three sets to failure every day is drastically different than 14 sets to failure once a week. We want to increase the volume, but want to make sure that it's not beyond what's necessary. Compound movements do work your biceps and triceps, but since the goal of those movements is usually to take the back or chest to failure, you have to take it day by day. If you feel like your biceps really got hammered on the lat pull down on those barbell rows, or your triceps were shredded on bench press, you won't have to do as much volume for your arm workout. And that will happen on its own because when you go to do arms, the fatigue from the compound movements will set in, or it won't if you didn't use the accessory muscles too much during those compound movements. So we know the biceps and triceps are smaller than most other muscle groups, and theoretically, you know, we don't have to do more than one or two exercises each compared to the three or four, maybe even five, that you might have to do for back or chest. On paper, that makes sense, but it doesn't work practically. That's because people always focus on increasing the weight as opposed to the intensity. And the way I increase my overall training load is by upping the training frequency, shortening the rest time, and really contracting the muscle. The effectiveness of full body routines doesn't seem like it's really hit the mainstream as hard as it should have. And part of that full body routine involves doing arms every single day. This applies to all muscle groups, but when you work the muscle every day, it recovers every day, and you grow tissue every day. So when you do that full body routine, you might be doing you know, four, five, six times the amount of volume of someone doing a bro split. And that doesn't necessarily equate to that much more muscle size, but it is significant. It's probably two to three times muscle growth speed. So I do arms at the end of my workout because the way I structure my full body routine is whatever I need to work on the most, goes first. And since I feel like you know my arms are kind of ahead of the rest of my physique, mainly due to my long arm genetics, I do them last. And all I've been doing for the past nine months 
It is a couple sets of tricep pushdowns and a couple sets of bicep curls. Of course, there's been a bit of variance in weight, but for the most part, it's been pretty consistent. About 80% of the time, I'll do a moderate weight. So that means you know, about 40 to 50 pounds on the pushdown. And my main focus here is really flexing and stretching the tricep. And I'll do about 10 to 15 reps standing like this, squeezing that long head of the tricep really well. And when I feel like it's getting a little difficult, I'll switch over to behind the neck and this hits the outer head a bit more. So I'll really squeeze the outer head here, anywhere from five to 10 reps. And I will use a little momentum if I have to here, just to really flex that outer head. And then I move on to my famous 15 pound dumbbell curls. Now in my full body routine, my biceps usually get hit harder on back than my triceps do with chest. So some days when I go to do these bicep curls, I don't really feel it in my biceps at all because they're a bit overworked. But today it feels pretty good. So this is as basic as it gets, you know, just 12 to 20 reps of really nice contractions. Sometimes I'll go with like an outer extension a little bit, hit a different part. Sometimes I'll go a bit inner, hit a different part, but for the most of the time, I just go, you know, parallel up and down to failure. And usually if I feel good, I'll jump right into another set. If not, I'll do a set of calf raises. So for my full body routine, I usually superset glutes with back and some with chest, and then I'll superset calves with some of chest, shoulders, and arms. And maybe I'll even do a few sets of abs here and there. Anywhere from 15 to 30 reps I'll do. Then right back to the tricep extensions and bicep curls. So I'll do between four and six sets of each, and then I'll be around failure. And by failure, I mean, you know, I go to do the standing tricep extensions. I only get four or five reps. I try to do some behind the neck. I get one or two reps. And then I go to do the bicep curls and I get like seven or eight comfortably. That's what I do most of the time with moderate weight. Sometimes when I feel really, really good, I'll up the weight a little bit. I'll go heavier than I should. So maybe I'll do like 70 or 80 pounds on the tricep extension. I'll swing a bit, use a little momentum and it feels pretty good. And I like doing this for maybe 10% of my workouts. Just go a little heavier on certain exercises bang out as many as I can standing. I do the same thing behind the neck. And same thing with biceps. I'll take a much heavier weight than I normally do. 35 pounds. And despite curling relatively lightweight for most of my workouts, you know, 10, 15 pounds, I still have a decent amount of strength where I can curl, you know, 35, 40 pound dumbbells. So I'll do as many of these as I comfortably can. And when I go heavy, usually I get less good sets in. So with the moderate weight, I'm doing four or five good sets to failure. With the heavy weight, maybe only two or three. And this is why you don't bodybuild because you're out of breath after you do everything. Another 10% of the time, if I don't feel good, I do a really lightweight and usually when I do that really lightweight, I'll still move into a moderate weight afterwards, but you know, the first two or three sets, really light, 20 pounds, nice, easy flex. Squeeze the muscle, feel the muscle, and then you know, when I feel a little better, I'll up the weight a little bit. You know, same with the dumbbell curls. If you don't feel good that day, grab some 10 pound dumbbells. This is a marathon, it's not a race, and you know, doing a 10 pound dumbbell curl might only be, you know, 70 to 80% as effective as your normal workout, but it's still, you know, 70 to 80% better than doing nothing. So I'll do that to failure and then that's really it. So four, five, six sets, most of the time moderate weight, sometimes heavy, sometimes light. Rest time is very low. You guys saw I did like 15, 20, 30 calf raises. 
I'm not really resting more than, you know, 30 to 40 seconds between each of these exercises. So only five minutes a day really for my arm workout. And there's a couple things I wanted to touch on. Uh, one was that my arms are a little longer and larger than the rest of my frame. So it kind of creates this unusual appearance, so to speak. And that combined with the fact that people are used to seeing enhanced steroid using weightlifters that tend to have really big shoulders, traps, and chest. So what happens is when you use testosterone or performance enhancing drugs that are meant for bodybuilding, you get more androgen response in uh, those muscle groups. So there are receptors that are more susceptible to the steroids. That's why you see people with like really rounded boulder shoulders, trap separation, big upper chest, Natural weightlifters don't have that, and I'm a natural weightlifter, so what you'll see typically, and it usually means someone is a natural, when they have larger arms, or their arms appear larger because the frame of reference you have, you know, is all of these juice head athletes. So I don't really like being compared to those people, and for all of my workout routine, I have put my arms to the wayside. At no point in time have I focused on my arms, in fact, I've actually focused on those other muscle groups, the shoulders, the chest, the traps. But again, you know, the image that most people have in their head is distorted because all of these fake natties lying to them. So I like to think this video is a good introduction to my training philosophy, my training style, you know, some other videos I'm going to talk about in the near future, such as, you know, muscle size and relevant strength, you know, using lighter weight to really build up that muscle to the point where you can stimulate it. Uh, so let me know how you guys like this. Uh, of course, if you could please like the video, leave me a comment down below, and above all guys, please share the video on social media. If you do want to support me further, you know how to do so down in the description. Thank you guys for joining me today. I'll see you for tomorrow's video, and if you'd like to join us, we're doing a live stream later on the channel Frank Tufana.